RAS to solve the rational inequality and express the solution using inequalities as well as interval notation. To solve a rational inequality, the first step is to factor the numerator and denominator, which in our case indicates we must factor the denominator. Notice the numerator is already factored. So we have the quantity x minus three divided by, let's go ahead and factor the quadratic expression. If it does factor, it'll factor into two binomial factors. Because the first term is x squared, we have an x in the first position of the two binomial factors. The second terms in the binomial factors will be the factors of negative 32 that add to negative four, which are negative eight and positive four, giving us a factor of x minus eight and a factor of x plus four. And we still have greater than or equal to zero. Step two, we determine the zeros of the numerator and denominator, which are the values of x that make the numerator and denominator equal to zero. Now that we have it in factored form, notice the numerator is equal to zero when x equals positive three. The denominator is equal to zero when x equals positive eight, or x equals negative four. Step three, we plot the zeros on the number line. Zeros of the denominator are always open points because when the denominator is zero, we have division by zero, which is undefined. This indicates we make an open point at x equals positive eight, as well as x equals negative four. These open points exclude these values as possible solutions. And then the zero of the numerator can either be an open point or closed point based upon the original inequality. The original inequality is greater than or equal to, because of the equal part, we make a closed point at x equals positive three. When x equals positive three, the rational expression is equal to zero. Zero greater than or equal to zero is true, which is why we make a closed point at x equals three. Three is a solution to the irrational inequality. From here, notice these three points divide the number line into four subintervals. We now need to pick a test value in each subinterval and see if it satisfies the rational inequality. If it does, the entire interval satisfies the inequality. If the test value doesn't satisfy the inequality or is false, the entire interval does not satisfy the rational inequality. So let's go ahead and pick our test values. We have to pick four. On the left, let's use x equals negative five. Next, let's use x equals zero. Then let's use x equals four. And then we'll use x equals nine. So let's first test x equals negative five. Let's go ahead and use the factored form of the rational inequality. When x is negative five, the numerator is negative eight. The denominator is negative five minus eight, that's negative 13, times negative five plus four, which is negative one. Simplifying, we have negative eight thirteenths greater than or equal to zero. Any negative number is not going to be greater than or equal to zero, this is false. Negative eight thirteenths is not greater than or equal to zero. So because x equals negative five did not satisfy the inequality, this interval is not part of our solution. And now let's test x equals zero. When x is equal to zero, the numerator is negative three, and the denominator is negative eight times four. This gives us negative three divided by negative 32, which simplifies to three divided by 32. This positive fraction is greater than or equal to zero. This is true. This indicates the entire interval satisfies the rational inequality, and we graph the entire interval. This interval is going to be part of our solution. And now we test x equals four. When x is equal to four, the numerator is one. The denominator is going to be four minus eight, which is negative four, times four plus four is eight. This gives us negative one thirty-second, greater than or equal to zero, which is false. A negative fraction is never going to be greater than or equal to zero. Because the test value is false, the entire interval is false, and does not satisfy the rational inequality. And for our last value, we test x equals nine. When x is equal to nine, the numerator is nine minus three, or six. The denominator is nine minus eight, which is one, times nine plus four is 13. 
This gives us 6 thirteenths, which is a positive fraction, which is greater than or equal to zero. The test value is true, and therefore the entire interval is true, and we graph the interval where x is greater than eight. Now that we have the graph of the solution, we can express the solution using inequalities as well as using interval notation. We can say that x is greater than negative four and less than or equal to three or x is greater than positive eight. Here's our solution using inequalities. Using interval notation on the left, we have the interval from negative four to positive three. The interval is open on negative four or does not include negative four. We use a parenthesis to the left of negative four. The interval is closed or includes positive three. We use a square bracket to the right of positive three. Union, on the right we have the open interval from eight to infinity. The interval does not include or is open on eight, and we always use a parenthesis to the right of infinity as well as to the left of negative infinity. So here we have the graph of the solution, the solution as an inequality, as well as using interval notation. I hope you found this helpful.